a retired gentleman decided to visit the Social Security office to apply for his Social Security benefits. After a considerable wait and a long clue, he finally reached the service counter. The lady working there asked him to show his driver's license to confirm his age. He started searching through his pockets and soon realized that he had left it at home by mistake. Feeling a bit embarrassed, he apologized to the woman and said, I'm really sorry, but it looks like I forgot my wallet at home. Do I need to go back home and get it before we can proceed? The woman at the counter thought for a moment and then suggested, Why don't you unbutton your shirt? Puzzled but willing to comply, he unbuttoned his shirt, revealing his chest, covered in curly silver hair. The woman glanced at his chest and then confidently said, That silver hair on your chest is enough evidence for me to believe you are of the right age. She then went ahead and processed his social security application without further need for his ID. Later that day, the man returned home, still amused by the incident at the social security office. He recounted the whole story to his wife, explaining how the silver hair on his chest had been enough proof for the lady at the counter. His wife listened to his story and then, with a twinkle in her eye, responded, You should have dropped your pants too. Maybe then you could have qualified for disability benefits as well. Mary, a young woman, found herself in a long line waiting to enter heaven. As she stood near the pearly gates, she was chatting with St. Peter, who was welcoming everyone. Suddenly, Mary heard a loud drilling noise followed by a piercing scream. Startled, she turned to St. Peter and asked curiously, What's that sound? St. Peter, with a calm demeanor, replied, Oh, that? It's just an angel getting her halo attached. It can be a bit startling at first, but it's a standard procedure here. Mary nodded, slightly reassured, but still a bit uneasy. She tried to focus on her conversation with St. Peter, but then another scream echoed through the area. Concerned, she asked again, And what was that noise now? St. Peter, with a gentle smile, answered, That's just another angel receiving her wings. It's a special moment for them, though it can be a bit surprising for newcomers to hear. After hearing this, Mary paused and thought for a moment. She then looked at St. Peter and said decisively, In that case, I think I'd rather go to hell. St. Peter, taken aback, began to respond. But you? Before he could finish, Mary interrupted with a smile and quipped. At least I already have the holes for that. <laughs> Crazy Mike walked into his local pharmacy one day with a big grin on his face. He approached the pharmacist and said, Hey, I need something special today. I've got three ladies visiting me tonight, and this is the first time I'm going to be with three women at the same time. So, what do you have? That can keep me excited and energetic all through the night. The pharmacist, used to Mike's unusual requests, nodded understandingly. He bent down, unlocked a lower drawer of his cabinet, and pulled out a box labeled Viagra Extra Strength, which had several individually wrapped pills. He handed one to Mike and said, Take just one of these and you'll find yourself more than ready for your adventurous night. It will keep you going for twelve hours straight. Crazy Mike, with a mischievous twinkle in his eye, responded, well, if one is good for twelve hours, then give me three. I already really prepared. The following day, Mike came back to the pharmacy, looking rather disheveled and in obvious discomfort. The pharmacist, seeing him return, smiled and asked, So, how did your big night go? In response, Mike, with a pained expression, pulled down his pants to reveal his privates, which were in a terrible state, bruised, swollen, and blistered. It was one of the most dreadful sights the pharmacist had ever seen. Seeing the state he was in, Mike said, You've got to give me a tube of icy hot. The pharmacist, shocked and concerned, exclaimed, You're not planning to apply icy hot on that, are you? Mike, wincing in pain, quickly replied, Hell no. It's for my arms. None of the girls showed up. A middle-aged accountant, who was 54 years old, decided to leave a note for his wife one Friday evening. He wrote, Dear wife, I am 54 years old and by the time you read this letter, I will already be at the Grand Hotel with my young and beautiful 18-year-old secretary. He felt quite smug about his plan and left for the hotel, expecting an adventurous weekend. However, upon his arrival at the Grand Hotel, he was surprised to find a letter waiting for him at the reception. The letter was from his wife, and it read, Dear husband, I want to inform you that I too am 54 years old. And by the time you read this letter, I will be enjoying my time at the Breakwater Hotel, with my attractive and adventurous 18-year-old male friend. 
Since you are an accountant in bid with numbers, you'll understand that 18 fits into 54 many more times than 54 fits into 18. A businessman and his secretary, caught up in a whirlwind of passion, decided to sneak off to his house for a quick romantic encounter one early afternoon. As they were getting comfortable, the businessman tried to ease any worries by saying, Don't worry about a thing. My wife is on a business trip out of town. We're completely safe here. As they were getting more intimate, the secretary suddenly rummaged through her purse and let out a gasp of concern. She turned to him and said, We have to stop right now. I just realized I forgot to bring my birth control. The businessman, not wanting the moment to end, quickly replied, No problem at all. I'll just use my wife's diaphragm. She won't ever know. He hurried off to search for it, leaving the secretary waiting in the bedroom. After several minutes of rummaging through his wife's belongings, he came back, but this time he was fuming with anger. He burst into the room and exclaimed, That witch! She took her diaphragm with her on the trip. I always knew she didn't trust me. An Israeli doctor, during an international medical conference, started boasting about the advances in medicine in his country. He proudly said, You know, in Israel, medical technology is so advanced that we can take a kidney from one person, transplant it into another, and get the recipient up and looking for a job in just six weeks. Not the outdone, a German doctor joined the conversation, replying with a sense of pride. That's quite impressive, but it's nothing compared to what we do in Germany. We have the ability to take a lung from one person, transplant it into another, and have the patient ready to look for work in just four weeks. Then a Russian doctor decided to share his country's achievements. He chimed in, saying, In Russia, medicine is incredibly advanced as well. We can take half of a person's heart, transplant it into another person, and have both of them up and looking for work in just two weeks. Finally, an American doctor, not wanting to be left behind in this display of medical prowess, added his own twist to the conversation. He said, Well, that's all quite remarkable. But let me tell you about America. We took out an asshole out of Texas, put in the White House, and half the country will be looking for work tomorrow. In a remote monastery, there was a unique tradition for testing monks before their ordination. The monastery had a peculiar and challenging final test, designed to measure the depth of their spiritual purity and self-control. Twelve monks, after years of rigorous spiritual training, were ready to face this final hurdle. The test was unusual. The monks had to stand in a line in a serene garden, completely naked. The challenge did not end there. Each monk had a tiny bell attached to his privates. In front of these monks, a nude model was sent to perform a dance. The rule was simple yet strict. If any monk's bell rang during the dance, it meant that he had not achieved the necessary level of spiritual purity and would thus be disqualified from being ordained. One by one, the model danced gracefully in front of each monk. The monks stood still, focusing all their years of training on maintaining their composure. The first monk passed the test as the model danced before him, no reaction, no bell sound. The same happened with the second monk, and then the third and so on. Finally, the model reached the last monk in the line. He had watched his fellow monks pass the test and was determined to do the same. However, as the model danced in front of him, his bell rang out loudly, breaking the silence and eventually it fell off and clinked onto the ground. The monk, flushed with embarrassment, bent over to pick up his bell. But as he did so, eleven other bells began to ring. A couple deeply in love were in the midst of their dating phase when the man, feeling sure about their bond, decided to propose. Overwhelmed with happiness, the woman, named Wendy, had a unique request. She wanted her boyfriend to demonstrate his love in an unusual way, by getting her name tattooed on his manhood. Specifically, she wanted the tattoo to spell out her name Wendy when it was erect, and just why when it wasn't. The man, truly in love and wanting to fulfill her wish, went ahead and got the tattoo. It was exactly as Wendy had wanted. It read Wendy when erect, and just why in its normal state. Pleased with this profound display of affection, Wendy accepted his proposal, and they got married. For their honeymoon, the newlyweds decided to go to a beautiful beach in Jamaica. One sunny day on the beach, Wendy asked her husband to get them some drinks. While he was at the beachside stand, he noticed something peculiar about the local man serving him drinks. The waiter also had a tattoo that read Y on his manhood. Curious and feeling a strange camaraderie, the husband said to the waiter, Oh, I see you have a Y tattoo as well. 
You must have a wife named Wendy, too. The waiter with a chuckle replied, No, actually, mine says, Welcome to Jamaica, man. Have a nice day. A man entered a bar and noticed a stunning blonde woman sitting alone on a bar stool. Intrigued, he decided to sit next to her and struck up a conversation. As they were talking, he pulled out a small box from his pocket and opened it, revealing a frog inside. The blonde looking at the frog commented, He's quite cute, but does he do any special tricks? The man responded with a grin. Yes, he has a very unique talent. He's trained to lick girls' cats. The blonde, both amused and curious, continued chatting with the man. After a while, he managed to persuade her to come back to his apartment to see the frog's trick in action. When they arrived, the blonde, getting into the spirit of the moment, took off her clothes and lay on the bed with her legs open, ready for the frog's performance. The man carefully placed the frog between her legs, but to their surprise, the frog did nothing. It just sat there, unmoved. The blonde, a bit disappointed, asked, So, what's going on? Why is it the frog doing anything? The man looked at the frog, then leaned over and whispered to it, All right, this is the last time I'm going to show you how to do this. A wealthy couple was getting ready for an upscale evening event. The lady of the house decided to give Jervis, their butler, the night off as they anticipated returning quite late. She mentioned to Jervis that she hoped he would enjoy his time off. However, as the evening progressed, the wife found herself not enjoying the party and decided to return home early, leaving her husband to mingle with their important guests. Upon arriving home, she was surprised to find Jervis alone in the dining room. She beckoned him to follow her up to the master bedroom. Once there, she looked at Jervis with a mix of authority and said, Jervis, I need you to do something for me. I want you to take off my dress. Jervis, well-trained and obedient, carefully removed her dress and draped it over a chair. Continuing, she said, Now, Jervis, please remove my stockings and garter belt. Without a word, Jervis complied with her request. She then instructed, And now, Jervis, I need you to take off my bra and panties. Jervis did as he was told. Then, with a stern look on her face, the lady turned to Jervis and said firmly, Jervis, this is the last time I'm going to tell you. If I ever catch you wearing my clothes again, you're fired. In an advertising firm, there was a young secretary known for her attractive figure. She often wore very tight clothes that showed off her figure, particularly noticeable when she walked around the office. This didn't go unnoticed by many, including her boss, a young man known for his assertive and sometimes brash manner. One day in the middle of a busy afternoon, her boss called her into his office and promptly shut the door behind her, ensuring they had privacy. He gestured towards her, specifically pointing out how her clothes tightly hug her body. Looking directly at her, he asked in a somewhat suggestive tone, Is that for sale? Taken aback by his bold and inappropriate question, the secretary responded, Of course not, while her cheeks turned a deep shade of red. The boss replied in a quiet but firm tone, Then I suggest you stop advertising it. A young man filled with excitement and joy approached his mother with some big news. He had fallen deeply in love and had decided that he was ready to get married. Eager to have a bit of fun with the situation, he proposed a playful challenge to his mother. He said to her, Mom, I've got a fun idea. I'm going to bring three women over to our house, and you'll have to try and guess which one I plan to marry. His mother, intrigued and amused by this little game, agreed to participate. The following day, the young man arrived at the house with three stunning women. He introduced them to his mother and they all sat down on the couch in the living room. They engaged in some light conversation, everyone seeming to enjoy the interaction. After a while, the young man turned to his mother and said, Okay, Mom, it's time to guess. Which one do you think I'm going to marry? Without hesitating, his mother quickly pointed to the redhead sitting in the middle and said confidently, The redhead in the middle. The young man was taken aback by her swift and sure response. Astonished, he exclaimed, That's amazing. You're absolutely right. But how did you know? His mother simply replied, I don't like her. During a fierce battle, an army officer urgently needed to retrieve important documents from the field. He spotted a nearby soldier and shouted orders to him. The task was extremely dangerous. The soldier had to run through the battleground, dodging enemy fire to collect a dispatch case from a fallen comrade. 
Despite the risks, the soldier, showing remarkable bravery, sprinted across the field, straight into the line of fire. Miraculously avoiding the bullets whizzing past him, the soldier reached the deceased soldier, grabbed the dispatch case, and made a daring dive back to the safety of their lines. His actions were nothing short of heroic. The officer, impressed by the soldier's courage, approached him after the ordeal. He said, Private, your bravery today was exceptional. You risked your life under heavy enemy fire. I'm going to recommend you for a medal. You've saved critical information about the locations of our secret warehouses. Upon hearing this, the soldier, who was still catching his breath, looked shocked and shouted back, Warehouses. I thought you said whorehouses. One sunny day, a woman was strolling through a local market when she spotted a stand selling fresh apples. Curious about the price, she approached the man behind the stand and inquired, How much are these apples priced at? The vendor replied, Each apple is just one dollar, but if you're interested, I'm also selling apple seeds for two dollars each. The woman, puzzled by this unusual sales pitch, questioned, But why are you selling just the seeds, and why do they cost more than the apples themselves? The vendor leaned in, as if sharing a secret, and explained, You see, these apple seeds are special. They're known to significantly boost one's intelligence. You should give them a try. Though skeptical, the woman's curiosity got the better of her. She handed over four dollars and received two seeds in return. As she walked away from the stand, she began to chew on the seeds. A few moments later, a realization struck her. She could have simply bought an entire apple for one dollar and eaten the seeds within it. Feeling a bit foolish, but now determined to confront the vendor, she marched back to the stall. Confronting the vendor, she said, Wait a minute. Don't you realize people could just buy a whole apple from you and eat those seeds, instead of buying them separately for more money? The vendor, with a knowing smile, responded, See, I told you the seeds would make you smarter. A man was facing a challenge with premature ejaculation, so he decided to seek medical advice. The doctor, after hearing his problem, gave him an unusual piece of advice. He said, When you feel you're about to ejaculate prematurely, try giving yourself a shock or a startle. That might help you delay the ejaculation. Taking this advice to heart, the man left the doctor's office and went straight to a store. There he purchased a starter pistol, thinking that the loud noise might be just the thing to startle him at the crucial moment. Excited to try out this unique solution, he hurried home to his wife. That evening, as the couple became intimate, they decided to try the 69 position. As things heated up, the man felt the familiar urge to ejaculate. Remembering the doctor's advice, he quickly grabbed the starter pistol and fired it, hoping to delay his climax. The next day, the man returned to the doctor for a follow-up. The doctor, eager to know if his unconventional solution had worked, asked how the night had gone. The man, looking quite distressed, replied, It didn't go well at all. When I fired the pistol, my wife got so scared that she accidentally pooped on my face. In her shock, she also bit off three inches of my manhood. And to top it all off, my neighbor came bursting out of the closet with his hands in the air. A blonde and a brunette decided to have a fun evening out and went to a local bar. As they settled into their seats, the brunette noticed a man at the other end of the bar who couldn't take his eyes off her blonde friend. Seeing an opportunity, the brunette excused herself and walked over to the man. She approached him with a sly smile and said, I see you can't stop looking at my friend over there, the blonde. She's quite attractive, isn't she? The man, a little flustered but clearly interested, replied, Oh man, she's not just pretty. She's absolutely stunning, a real beauty. Seizing the moment, the brunette leaned in closer and whispered, How would you like a special opportunity? For $50, I can arrange for you to have a very personal experience. You could, let's say, smell her crotch. The man's eyes widened in surprise and excitement. Believing this to be a rare and thrilling offer, he quickly agreed. He eagerly took out $50 and handed it to the brunette. The brunette took the money. Then, she leaned in and breathed in his face. Lori, a charming and attractive nurse, was facing a personal dilemma. She worked at a hospital and found herself repeatedly in romantic entanglements with some of the young doctors there. Each time, these encounters led to her ending up in bed with them, and afterward, she would be overwhelmed with feelings of guilt and sadness. Determined to find a solution, Lori decided to seek the advice of a psychiatrist who worked in the same hospital. 
She hoped that talking to a professional might help her navigate her feelings and find a way to deal with the situation. When she met with the psychiatrist, she poured out her troubles. Doctor, I really need your help, she implored. It seems every time I go out with one of the young doctors here, I end up sleeping with him. And every single time, I end up feeling terrible guilty and depressed for a whole week. The psychiatrist listened intently, nodding his head as he understood her predicament. He then asked, So you're seeking help to strengthen your willpower and resolve. You want to stop this pattern of behavior? To his surprise, Lori exclaimed, For God's sake, no, that's not what I want at all. I'm here because I want you to help me not feel guilty and depressed afterward. A man found himself in a dire situation following a severe car accident. Unfortunately, the accident resulted in significant injury to his privates, leaving him in a state of distress. The doctors, however, assured him that thanks to the advancements in modern medicine, they could reconstruct his manhood. There was one major issue, though. His insurance company deemed the surgery cosmetic and refused to cover the cost. The doctor informed him that he had three options based on size. $3,500 for small, $6,500 for medium, and $14,000 for a large reconstruction. The man, feeling a bit overwhelmed by these choices, was inclined to opt for either the medium or large option. However, the doctor suggested that he should discuss it with his wife before making such a significant decision. Taking the doctor's advice, the man called his wife and explained the situation, detailing the different options and their respective costs. After some time, the doctor returned to the man's room, curious to know the couple's decision. He found the man looking quite downcast and disheartened. Curious, the doctor asked. Well, what have you and your wife decided? The man, with sigh of resignation, replied. She'd rather have a new kitchen. Terry was at a bar, sharing his dilemma with a close friend. He was in a quandary about what to give his wife for her birthday. He explained, I'm really stuck on what to get my wife for her birthday. She already has everything one could imagine, and on top of that, she can buy anything she wants. So, I have no clue what to get her. His friend, after listening to Terry's problem, came up with a creative suggestion. He said, I have a unique idea. Why not create a special certificate for her? You could offer her 60 minutes of sex, any way she wants it. It sounds like a personalized gift she might really enjoy. Terry thought his friend's idea was brilliant. The next day, he went back to the bar and his friend eagerly asked him, So, did you go with my suggestion? Terry with a smile replied, Yes, I did. His friend, curious about the outcome, asked, And how did she react? Did she like it? Terry's smile grew wider as he recounted what happened. Oh yes, she absolutely loved it. She jumped up with excitement, thanked me, gave me a kiss on the forehead, and then she ran out the door shouting, I'll be back in an hour. A young and caring teacher noticed that one of her students, little Johnny, was struggling with his schoolwork. His grades had dropped significantly, which was unlike him. Concerned about his academic decline, she decided to have a private conversation with him after class. Once the class was over and the other students had left, the teacher approached little Johnny. She asked him in a gentle and concerned tone, Little Johnny, I've noticed that your schoolwork hasn't been up to par lately. What's been going on? Why are you finding it so difficult? Little Johnny looked up at her with serious eyes and replied with a straightforward answer, I'm in love. The teacher was taken aback by his response. She was trying to hide a smile. So she asked him softly, And who is it that you are in love with? Without any hesitation, little Johnny boldly declared, With you. The teacher, trying to maintain her composure and handle the situation delicately, responded, But, little Johnny, you must understand how silly that sounds. I'm flattered, but it's not possible. Sure, I'd like to have a husband someday, but I don't want a child. Little Johnny, however, seemed unfazed by her explanation. He looked up at her and said confidently, Oh, don't worry about that. I'll use a condom. A nun found herself in need of a restroom while she was out and about. Looking around, the only place nearby was a local Hooters. The nun, despite feeling slightly out of place, bravely walked into the bustling establishment. The place was alive with music, loud conversations, and intermittent darkness. Every once in a while, the lights would mysteriously turn off, which was met with cheers and laughter from the patrons. However, as the nun made her entrance, the room fell into an unusual silence. 
Undeterred, the nun made her way to the bartender and politely asked, May I please use your restroom? The bartender, a bit surprised but respectful, replied, Okay, but just so you know, there is a statue of a naked man inside, covered only by a fig leaf. The nun and phased responded with grace, That's perfectly fine. In that case, I'll simply look the other way. The bartender then guided her to the restroom at the back of the restaurant. After a few minutes, the nun emerged back into the main area. To her surprise, as soon as she stepped out, the entire room burst into applause, cheering loudly for her. Feeling confused and a bit embarrassed, the nun approached the bartender and asked, Sir, I don't understand. Why did everyone applaud just because I used the restroom? The bartender explained, Well, now they know you're one of us. Would you like a drink? The nun, still puzzled, replied, no, thank you, but I really don't understand what's going on. The bartender chuckled and said, You see, every time someone licks the fig leaf on that statue in the restroom, the lights in the entire place go out. Now, how about that drink? In the early days of the Garden of Eden, Adam was feeling quite lonely. He wandered around the beautiful garden, but without a companion, he felt something was missing in his life. Observing Adam, God approached him and asked, What's wrong with you, Adam? You seem down. Adam confessed. I'm just feeling really lonely. I have no one to talk to. God, understanding Adam's plight, decided to offer a solution. He said, I think I have the perfect idea. I'm going to create a companion for you, a woman. She will be there to talk with you and keep you company. God then elaborated on this companion he had in mind. This woman will not only be your companion, but she will also take care of many things for you. She will gather food, cook for you, and later on, when you start wearing clothes, she'll even wash them for you. She will always support your decisions and never argue with you. If you ever have a disagreement, she will be the first to admit she's wrong. She will always compliment and praise you. She will bear your children and never wake you up in the middle of the night to take care of them. Also, she will never have a headache and will always be willing to offer you love and passion whenever you need it. Adam, Intrigued and a little overwhelmed by this description, asked God, What will a woman like this cost me? God replied, Well, for a companion as wonderful as this, it will cost you an arm and a leg. Adam thought for a moment, pondering the high cost. Then he asked God, What can I get for a rib? Two women were out in the fields, busily picking potatoes. As they worked, one of the women, holding two particularly large potatoes in her hands, suddenly paused and looked over at her friend. With a mischievous glint in her eye, she said, You know, these potatoes kind of remind me of my husband's testicles. The other woman looked at the potatoes and then at her friend. She couldn't help but ask, Really? Are his testicles that big? The first woman, with a quick laugh and a shake of her head, replied, No, not at all. They're just as dirty. One morning, a man was sitting at the kitchen table sipping his coffee and enjoying the quiet start to his day. Suddenly, his wife appeared behind him and, without warning, gave him a sharp slap on the back of his head. Fuming, she confronted him. I found a piece of paper in your pocket with the name Mary Lou written on it. You better have a really good explanation for this. The husband, slightly startled by this unexpected attack, tried to calm her down. Calm down, honey, he said. Remember last week when I went to the dog races? Marilou was the name of the dog I placed a bet on. That's all it is. The wife seemed somewhat appeased by this explanation, and life went on as normal. However, the very next morning, as the husband was again enjoying his peaceful coffee time, his wife stealthily approached him and out of the blue, smacked him on the head once more. Rubbing his head in pain, the husband exclaimed, What was that for? His wife replied, Your dog called last night. A sailor, newly wed and deeply in love, found himself assigned to a remote island in the Pacific for a year-long deployment, not long after his marriage. The island, beautiful but isolated, was far from the comforts of home and the embrace of his new wife. As the weeks on the island turned into a month, the sailor began to deeply miss his partner. He decided to write her a heartfelt letter, pouring out his feelings. In his letter, he wrote, My love, we are going to be separated for a very long time. Already, I'm feeling the absence of your presence, and there's not much here to occupy my evenings. Additionally, this place is filled with young and attractive native girls, 
which makes it even more challenging. Do you think if I took up a hobby, it would help keep my mind off temptations? After reading her husband's letter, his wife pondered on how to help him. So she decided to send him a harmonica with a note, you should learn to play this. Eventually, his tour of duty came to an end, and he rushed back to his wife. As soon as he saw her, he exclaimed, Darling, I can't wait to get you into bed so that we can make passionate love. His wife gently kissed him and said, First, let's see you play that harmonica. John had to leave for a business trip that was scheduled to last for two days. He set off early in the morning, making sure he had everything he needed for the trip. However, just a few blocks away from his house, John had a sudden realization. He forgot his plane ticket, which he last remembered placing on top of his dresser. Concerned about missing his flight, he quickly turned his car around and headed back home. Upon reaching his house, John decided to enter quietly, not wanting to disturb anyone. He slipped through the door and made his way towards the kitchen. As he entered the kitchen, he saw his wife, who was busy washing the breakfast dishes. She was dressed in her most revealing negligee, which caught John's attention immediately. She looked so appealing to him that he couldn't resist sneaking up behind her. He tiptoed towards her and playfully reached out, giving her left breast a gentle squeeze. His wife, without turning around, casually said, Leave only one pint of milk. John won't be here for breakfast tomorrow. The local police department received an urgent call from a women's gym. As soon as the call was received, Two male police officers were dispatched to the scene. Upon their arrival, they were greeted by the gym's female manager, who was visibly distressed and anxious. Rushing out to meet the officers as they stepped out of their patrol car, she exclaimed, Please, come quickly. It's terrible. We discovered a peephole that's been drilled into the ladies' changing room. It appears that some pervert has been spying on us. One of the policemen, trying to calm the situation, replied with a reassuring tone, Don't worry. We're here now, and we'll handle the situation. We'll start investigating immediately to find the person responsible. For now, please ask all the ladies to return to their exercises. We'll ensure their safety, so there's no need for further concern. Feeling a bit relieved but still worried, the gym manager then asked, That's a relief to hear, but what about the hole that's been drilled in the wall? The other officer responded, Rest assured, we'll be looking into it. A man decided to send a text message to his neighbor, Bob, feeling a heavy weight of guilt on his shoulders. He typed out his confession with a sense of urgency. Bob, I'm terribly sorry. I've been consumed by guilt and I can't keep this to myself anymore. I've been secretly using your wife when you're away. It's been happening far more often than you could imagine. The experience has been incredibly thrilling and enjoyable, to the point where I find myself unable to stop. There have been times when it's lasted for hours on end. I realize that this is no justification, but I'm just not getting this kind of excitement at home. The guilt is too much for me to bear. I sincerely hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. I promise it will never happen again. Upon reading the message, Bob was filled with a mix of anger and betrayal. In a state of rage, he grabbed his gun, stormed into his bedroom, and, without uttering a word, shot his wife. Just moments after this tragic act, the man received another text from his neighbor. This time the message read, Darn autocorrect, it's going to be the end of me. What I meant to say was Wi-Fi. One evening, Joe decided to surprise his wife with a romantic gesture. He arrived home holding a bouquet of a dozen red roses. His wife, pleasantly surprised, greeted him with a smile and asked, How lovely, dear. What's this special occasion? Joe, with a straightforward manner, replied, I want to make love to you. His wife, however, gently declined, Not tonight, dear. I have a headache. Undeterred, the next night, Joe tried again. This time, he came home with a large box of chocolates. He explained his intention, hoping for a different response. His wife, apologetic yet firm, said, I'm awfully tired. Not tonight. Joe didn't give up. Every night for an entire week, he brought home a different gift, each time hoping to woo his wife. However, each time, her answer remained the same a polite but firm no. Eventually, Joe came up with a more unusual idea. He arrived home one night with six small black kittens, each with a little red bow tied around their neck. He presented them to his wife. Delighted and intrigued by the adorable kittens, she exclaimed. How adorable, Joe. But what are they for? Joe answered, 
These are six little pallbearers for your dead pussy. Sarah watches as her mother tries on an expensive fur coat in a high-end department store. Do you realize, Sarah says, that some poor, dumb animal had to suffer just for you to wear that coat? Sarah's mother turns to her and snaps. Think about how much I've suffered, and don't call your father an animal.